Okay, I know what I'm about to do sounds crazy, but I'm seriously going to attempt to use MS DOS 6.22 from 1994 to achieve all the tasks I usually do on Windows 7. So, can DOS replace Windows 7? Well, let's find out. Okay, here we are. It's DOS 6.22. There's just one thing. I don't actually know how to use DOS. But don't worry, it's going to be okay because I have got a DOS manual that just happened to come with DOS. And it's, yeah, it's bundled with new PCs all the time. So if you ever buy DOS, you're typically not going to get help from the internet if it was like 1994. But look, you get a full on book all about DOS. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with the commands I know. I know clear screen, which is CLS, and that gets rid of all the junk that's on the screen. So now I'm just left with C colon forward slash more than hyphen. Everyone knows this command, I'm pretty sure. D-I-R, which stands for directory. So at least I can actually see the files on my computer. That's a start. DOS has dir after it, which means it's a directory, as well as NC. But these other files, such as WinA20 and stuff like that, are like config and bat files. So let's start off with making a folder. That will be the first task. So I'm pretty sure MD Apple. Oh, I think that worked because it gave me no errors. I, I guess it worked because it didn't say it was a bad command. So I'm feeling pretty good today. Let's see. Duh. And there we go. I have created a folder in DOS. So to open a folder, you type in that CD and then the folder name. So now it says I'm in the Apple folder. So let's try it out. I'll just type in dir, and there's nothing in this folder. To get out of the folder, I should type in CD and then two little full stops, and then I'm out of the folder. So that is basic navigation. Okay. So at least I've got basic navigation down, and we'll just test this out. First of all, this Apple folder I made, let's delete it right now. I'm pretty sure you use RD and then you say the directory's name now let's see Duh. and it's gone okay so we know how to create and delete folders and we know how to navigate into and out of folders it's a bit more typing rather than just a simple click as you do in Windows 7 but it is possible to navigate folders and have a whole directory and file system going on in DOS now that we've mastered the absolute basics in DOS navigation Let's attempt to write just a simple text file to track all these tasks that we're going to be doing throughout the video. Okay, now from memory, I believe you type in the command edit to write a simple text file. So when I say from memory, I mean four years ago, I was just reading through this DOS book, just a little bit of the first few pages, and this is where I know some of these basic commands from. So let's type in edit. Edit, and I think when you type in edit, you need to give it a name. So let's call it edit task list. Is there a mouse? No, there's no mouse, unfortunately. Can I use Alt? Yes, I can use Alt to open the menus and then the arrow keys to move around up here. So there we go. It does have a few find options. Oh, what's this display? Oh, and you can choose a color. Okay, let's customize this. I want green on... How do I... Maybe tab switches you to... Ah, yes. See, I am kind of getting this. Tab switches you between different elements on the screen. It is quite similar to what you would do in Windows 7 to switch to, like, buttons and stuff on the screen if you're using just the keyboard, which I don't think anyone does anymore. Um, so there we go. We're going to try and use green because I think green on a black background looks really cool. So let's try this out. The first thing I'm just going to write in this is OS first timer DOS video tasks. So that's going to be a little thing at the top. I want to, I can't really center this, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this to the middle. Our first task is just to, uh, well, what we're doing now. Create a text file to store the list of tasks. There we go. Let's try and do some, what do they call it, at C art or something like that, where you um, do things. So I'm going to do this and this, this and this. And for some reason, that is going to be our official I achieved a task in DOS logo thing. 
So let's do our next task. Oh no, what happened to it? Oh, it's doing something stupid now where it's every time I put my cursor down low, it's getting rid of a bit of that sentence. Oh, this text-based interface is driving me nuts. The next task will be play three DOS games that satisfy my... I wish I had spell check here. Is there any spell check if I say, um, blub? Because that's not a real word. No. Blob press should actually... Oh, why is there no spell check? I guess there's no spell check in Notepad, and I'm guessing this is kind of what you would call the Notepad of DOS. Oh, wow. If you look at the bottom corner there, the bottom right-hand corner, it's actually tracking what line and column I'm up to, so that's pretty cool. So let's play three DOS games that satisfy my gaming hunger. To save this, I'm pretty sure it's already saved. File, actually no, it isn't. Oh wow, there's help over here. Getting started about, what is this about? MS DOS Editor, oh, so that's what this is called. What else? I just want to look through what it says. Oh no, did that just wipe? Oh no, it didn't. I thought that just wiped my whole task list and I was like, oh no. No way. Oh, so this is a funny, it's like you're navigating a text file and you kind of come down here and it tells you about stuff. Oh, that is so strange. Okay, so if I can just get out of this, I think I just do back. I'm using this little carrot or whatever you call it to try and navigate back. Oh no, how do I get out of this window now? Oh nuts. Using help. Does it tell you how to quit help? To help, yada yada. To close help, window press escape. There we go, it told me how to do that. Okay, I should I should have known that press escape, but okay. Let's try this task now. Once again, save. And now we'll try and quit this file. Exit. I'm getting used to this. And now I'll just type in duh, and there's task list, and to open it, I think I just type task list. What? No, 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 no. Um, maybe catch task list, because I know cat is a word. What? Okay, something is wrong. Maybe it's capitals. No. Open task list. Edit task list. Ah, so I have to type in edit. Okay. I almost lost it there. I almost didn't know how to do it, but there we go. You can do it. You just type in edit again. All those commands just drove me crazy. I thought there was a way you could actually make it so that instead of opening the whole edit program, you can make the text display in DOS. I'm going to try it now. I'll look it up in this book just to see if I can learn the DOS basics and all of that. So there you go. This is like what the book looks like. I'm just going to go through it, have a little look and see if I can find my answer. Okay, so I've come across a few interesting commands. To copy a file, you type in the word copy, then the file location, then the place you want to put it to. So that's how you copy files. You can also rename files using the ren command. And you can also delete files by typing in del and then the name of the actual file itself. But now I've just got to find out how to... What am I trying to do? I forgot. See, when I'm working with DOS, it takes so long to work out what to do that I'm forgetting how to do it and what's on the screen really isn't helping me right now. So I just need to look back at this video and find out what the actual task was. I give up. It's telling me all this stuff about viruses and backing up DOS and all this stuff. I don't want to do that. This is why I need... I need the... Uh, sorry, I, I'm cheating here. Okay, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm just going to use a Surface Pro with Windows 8 to look up. This is what it's come down to, because I'm not a book person. I'm beyond that era, so I need my Google to get me to do things. I cannot just look at a book and work out what to do. I think I've just given up with the book for now, so... Display contents of a text file in DOS. It says type file name. Let's just see if this works. Type <gasps> the internet no, no, no. the internet is better than a book. Now just before we continue I'm just gonna edit the task list because that was a pretty big t task we just achieved just then. So what we just did was we display the contents of a text file without using edit. So now I want to copy this command here. Ah, oh, I can. So if I press shift and do this, let's see if control C, yes, and control, oh, you, how do you copy and paste? Now I've got to work this out. Um, control insert is copy and shift insert is paste. Now control insert, 
and do shift insert. Yes, okay, I figured out how to copy and paste using DOS. So there we go, and I'll just put this here to mark that I've successfully copied and pasted. There we go, now we can start playing the three DOS games that will satisfy my gaming hunger. Okay, so I've looked up a few DOS games and stuff like that. The first one I think we'll try out is Doom. Now, Doom was a popular first-person shooter from 1993 for DOS, and it has been ported heaps and heaps to other stuff like BOS and so on. Anyway, we'll try out Doom. I'll just grab the floppy disk, and I'll stick this into the computer. Okay, here we go. I've inserted the floppy disk into drive A, I believe, so we'll try this out. Yep, that's how you switch drives, so duh. So now we're looking at the contents of this floppy disk. It's only a 2.8 megabyte floppy disk. Install. Oh, there we go. Doom 1.9. This is awesome. So this is actually the Doom demo. It's not the full version. I think we only get eight levels, but we're not going to be playing that much anyway. So which drive to install to? Example C. Oh, I press C and it suddenly made a weird sound. Okay. Enter directory to copy Doom to. Okay, slash Doom. Dooms? No, just Doom. That directory does not exist. Would I like to create it? Yes. Controller type, keyboard only. Music card. Just sound blaster. I'm not sure of all this. Okay. Select IR key. Oh, for goodness sake, just keep everything default. I'm not sure about any of this stuff. Save parameters and launch Doom. Okay, here we go. Let's launch Doom. Oh, it's actually working. So I've got no mouse, but I can still go up and down like this. I don't think I'll have any sound, unfortunately. Yeah, let's just start. New game. Which episode? Knee Deep in the Dead, The Shores of Hell, or Inferno? I think The Shores of Hell. I don't know. Okay, I'll just try Knee Deep in the Dead. Um, uh, I'm too young to die. Hey. Oh, okay, so these are the <laughs> skill levels. Okay, so that's obviously very easy at the top there. And then all the way down to hard. Well, I'll do Hey, Not So Rough. Okay, so, okay, the arrow key side to side. Oh, this is actually working. Okay, um, it's got a massive border here. So, MO50 now, how do I shoot? It's not enter. Oh, okay, I figured out. Okay, control is shoot. Oh, can I push that in there? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, um, what's in the water there? Okay, let's just see what's going on here. Ooh, armor bonus. Right, that looks like some more armor. Oh, there we go, outside there's a bit of scenery. Oh, look at the face at the bottom, it's very... Oh, I can't believe it, you can see the face is all, like, bloody and stuff. Um, so where are these monsters? I feel like I'm going in a circle. Oh, there's a little passage, here we go. Oh, it's a dead end. Do I shoot it? Press a... Oh, I pressed a button and it worked. Okay, I think that's one of my friends up there. Hello? Oh, oh, he's shooting me. He, I thought he was a friend. Not a very good friend. Okay. <laughs> Picked up a clip. So who are your friends in there? How do you know who are the good guys and the bad guys? Because that looks like... Is he a good guy? I don't trust him. <laughs> okay. Let's just keep on going here. Oh, this is strange. I can't even tell what everything is. These graphics are like... I think those are planets. Am I in space? I don't even know. I think it's is it set in hell or space. I can't tell. Oh, what's that? Whoa! Oh, okay. Ah, okay, okay. No, no, no. Go across. Ah, no! Ah, no! No, 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 no. Don't get me. How do I mouse, like, shoot up at you? Oh, it do it's like auto doing it, I think. So, I don't think... Ah! Okay, just... There we go. So you don't actually have to shoot, aim up and down. It just works completely. Like, if you face a direction, you don't have to aim up and down. It kind of auto-aims, I think. Oh, space or so. Oh, okay, what's that thing? Where, where the gun button? Ah! Oh, no. Oh, and look at me. I'm all dead. Okay, that was Doom. Did it satisfy my gaming hunger? Um, press Y to go to DOS. <laughs> now it's advertising. Sure, don't order Doom. Sit back with your milk and cookies and let the universe go to hell. Or act like a man, slap on a few shells in your shotgun and let's kick some demonic butt. <laughs> okay.
Oh, and that's like it's printed that, so I'll just clear screen now. Okay, so that was Doom. And those are, oh, look at all the game files. And I also know you can type in dir slash w to display it like that. And dir slash p, so it's more compressed is what I meant to say. Then it shows you a little bit, then you press another key and then it shows you the rest, so that's pretty good. Order, readme.txt, let me just see what the readme says. Okay, type readme.txt. There we go. Okay, my review of Doom, it was... Okay, it was the graphics that was putting me off heaps, but I guess it was 1993, what you expect. It's not going to be like the great stuff we have today. Even stuff like graphics on iPads and stuff beat this Doom game. But it was a first-person shooter. I did feel a bit of navigation there. It was a bit strange, all this keyboard control and no mouse, but there was a mouse. I just haven't installed a mouse driver. I'll do that a bit later. Okay, next we're going to try out Crazy Cars 2 from 1989. So I'll just clear the screen, we'll get out of the Doom directory, and we'll go to the A drive, duh, okay there we go, now run me, should start the setup, Devil's Island, <laughs> okay, 101 megabytes of wares, I don't think this is it, duh, so it wasn't runme.com, this is just a demo, so I don't know why it was talking about wares there. What do I do? Run me dot bat? <laughs> I don't think this is it either. But okay, menu dot execute. A, ugh, I don't know. C? E, G, A. <laughs> this is embarrassing, okay. Um, how do I. I'm on the toilet! Ah, 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 ah. Oh, how do you do this? Okay, oh. Cop car keeps getting me. Ah! Oh my goodness, it's so hot! You can't quite hear this, but my actual speaker down there makes a lot of sound while I play this game. You watch this. I'm driving. Did you hear it? And it makes a crash sound. Oh my goodness. Ah! Okay, so it is pretty loud, so it does actually make sound this game, but sound from the speaker rather than the actual screen itself. Yeah, like, you turn the slightest bit and it's like, it turns you right off the road. Maybe... No, you can't even go forward and... Oh. This, a this game is actually impossible. Maybe I'm not controlling it right. Like, I'm definitely getting some adrenaline playing this. Oh, and you really feel like you're going fast too, but at the same time... I just can't play it. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to go slow. Okay, maybe this speed should do. Ah, and stop. And then go f Ah! I keep crashing into poles. I've just got- Oh, there we go. I'm taking it slow now. So you can drive slow, like this. This is a bit too slow. A bit faster. Ah! Oh. This is really hard to play this game. So this is... 24 years old. Oh. No, nah, I think I give up. It doesn't, it doesn't beat my fun factor. I don't know if there's even an aim to this or what you're supposed to do. I think the course is randomly generated from the looks of everything and you're trying to get as big a score as possible. So right now my score is 200 and... well 305. It's going up. So the faster you go Oh, and there's a speed at the top, so you can go 20 miles per hour. Ah, oh, get out of my way, police car. This is 39, so this is pretty good, but then you can go up to 95, which is the fastest. And then I'll just enter my name. P. H. I'll just do P. H. End. There we go. 385 points. I've won. And now my DOS crashed. Great. So things didn't go too well with Crazy Cars 2, I mean, it basically crashed and halted my 32 megabyte DOS computer. As for this racing game though, it didn't entertain me at all. I found it quite boring, to be honest. So racing games back then I could see probably weren't as popular, but I only tried one. So out of those two, I'll admit that Doom was a bit more exciting than Crazy Cars, because that just 
there was no track, there was no objective apart from getting a high score. I just found it boring, honestly. We'll finish off this DOS gaming session with Mario, released in 1994. So once again we'll go into the A drive. Duh. Okay, mario.execute, so it's a single file, that's good. So apparently this game, I'll just look at option sound on, yep, all that stuff, but it won't play any sound anyway. One player. Okay. So apparently this game was some kind of remake of Mario by some guy who wanted to learn programming on his computer or something like that. Um, oh, you use the shift keys to move the camera, that's strange. I don't know if you can hear the sound or not, but it has got sound coming out from the computer speakers. Oh, nuts, I don't want to break that. Okay, I've got to try and go up. Get up there. Oh, there we go. I've got to admit, this isn't too bad. Like, it's, it's, it is like playing a real Mario game, but it still feels a bit... When the screen moves like that, it's, oh, no. Okay, it feels a bit strange. I don't know. It doesn't feel... It should, it should be much smoother. Ah, oh, nuts. Now I'm dead. But there we go, this is Mario. So if it was 1994 right now... Okay, well let's rate. Out of all the games, out of Doom, out of that crazy racing game, it sure was crazy, um, and this, I've got to admit, I think I'm kind of enjoying this. Doom was good too, but I found it hard to control. Let's just see if I can... Okay, I can't get to the end of this level. I'm sure if I had a few more attempts I could, but... Let's just move on now. End. There we go, I'm back to DOS. So, so far I've tried out just basic navigation of DOS and games. As for the games, does DOS have the ability to replace Windows 7? Well, it can play games, but the games it has available are awful. To be honest, I really am not having any <laughs> that much fun playing them. If they were on a phone, I'd probably play those kind of things on a mobile phone but I wouldn't want to sit down officially at a big computer with a massive computer screen and a chair and a keyboard and all this stuff just to play these tiny little doot 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 games, you know, and these racing games that just go crazy and... It's more of something you'd see on a tablet. I wouldn't mind it on a tablet and like with the racing game, maybe if it was driving like this and the Mario game probably on my phone or something with their little virtual buttons and the Doom probably also on a phone or even a tablet, maybe if they had some cool like movement of the tablet like that, that would be cool, but DOS cannot replace Windows 7 when it comes to games. Anyway, let's move on to the next task. Use a more advanced text editing program. Back in the days of DOS, the most popular word processing programs were Microsoft Word and WordPerfect. I don't have a copy of those programs that can fit on a 2.8 megabyte floppy disk, so instead, we're going to try out Breeze 5.6. Duh, there it is on the floppy, so I'll just open Breeze.exe. And here we go. Now, it wants me to open a file, so I'll just type in C, and I'll do task list. Ah, oh, and there we go. Fantastic. Now, we'll just open the menu up here with F10. Ah, oh, and you can see all the different things. Wow, it's got a lot of things. So files, so you can load, pick, new, merge, change directory. Okay. And there's more windows blocks, so it's got all this stuff where you can copy, move, delete, and write. Oh, and look at this draw box. Well, let's try this. What we might do is we'll draw a box around around everything. So blocks, draw box, and now I select... Oh, wow, look at these line types. I think I might choose this one. Um, I don't like that. Can I erase box? Doesn't look very good. Um, F10, erase box. Okay, there we go. What I might try and do then is I'll draw a box somewhere else because I don't think that worked very well. Let's draw a box 
just like that. Draw box and we'll choose this type. Ah, there we go, that looks pretty cool. Now I wonder if there's a way to make everything bold. So we've got searching and searching for whole words, print, indenting, line numbers. Oh, let's turn line numbers on. I don't really see any line numbers, but okay. Oh, it's even got stuff like mail merge. That's pretty good. Format document, what will this do? Yep. Oh, it made everything look awful. <laughs> that was actually really bad. I'm not liking this program at all. There's a calculator there. Let's have a little look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool, so you can add and subtract and stuff like that, okay. So if I said 450 plus 4, yeah, it's, that's a pretty good calculator. And there's line drawing. Um, I'll choose this type of line. Let's see. Oh, wow, look at that. I can draw all around this terrible file like this. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> this is actually pretty cool, honestly. We'll just go down and across. Wow, look at that. Yeah, okay, I've just looked through everything. There is no copy, well, I mean bold and underline. So if you look through everything, it's not there. Next, we're going to do something I'm considering will be quite hard. Installing a mouse driver, or just getting this mouse or trackball to work with DOS. And this is going to drive me nuts. I'm really worried about this. So we'll just try it. But once I get this working, I assume DOS will be much easier to use because I'm used to a mouse, I'm used to graphical interfaces. I imagine that with this mouse I'll be able to like grab and highlight text rather than using the keyboard and the next task after that will be to do like a paint or drawing program and I think that would be like impossible using a keyboard. So yeah, let's try and get this mouse working for DOS. Okay, so I found a mouse driver. Um, I've put it on a floppy disk. It's called Cute Mouse. It's part of the free DOS project. So let's open it up. CT Mouse. .exe. Cute Mouse 2.0 Alpha 4 Free DOS. And now DOS has just crashed. Great. Okay, I've rebooted DOS. I've copied, I found the actual official mouse.com file and I've put it in the C drive. So let's just type in mouse.com. So this is the file that you're supposed to use. I got this file from the Windows 3.11 and it actually works with DOS. So let's see if it works. Cute Mouse? What? Ah, oh, so Cute Mouse, okay, even though it crashed my system before, it actually did work. I don't see a mouse on the screen. Let me go to the task list. Ah, oh, there's that silly thing there. Oh, look, the mouse is working. Oh my goodness, and I can click on menus. Oh, this is so awesome. Oh, and I can highlight. It's just like, it, it makes me feel like I'm using Windows 7. Apart from the fact that I've got this little cursor thing I control with the keyboard, this little green thing, and then the mouse is this strange little white thing. Now they can chase each other. Wee! I'm gonna get you! No! Come back here! Okay, enough of that. I'll just get rid of this. Delete. Delete. Oh, this feels so good to delete everything. So let's see if I can use the mouse to copy and paste. So I'll copy. We'll do this fully mouse based. Okay, so I've copied, or okay, I've highlighted, now copy. Now let's paste, and paste I know is shift insert. Pastes it. Oh wow, that's awesome. And you can just click, shift insert, paste. This feels like I'm using Windows 7. This is absolutely awesome with the mouse. I can't believe this. So there we go. It is actually possible to get the mouse working on DOS. It took me a while to work out, and it seems that that free DOS driver just seemed to be the one that happened to work in the end. It just doesn't seem to work in the normal DOS window, so you've got to kind of be in a program that just supports mouse support. That sounded weird. Now it's time to make a nostalgic artwork with Deluxe Paint 2 created in 1994. Let's try it out. Okay, so... Duh... Look at all these files here, I almost didn't know what it was. I think it's dp.exe, so deluxepaint.execute. Yes, that's it. Now I've got to choose, oh my goodness, look at all these options. So 256 colors is the best, but you want a higher resolution. I think I might go for 800 by 600, 256 colors. Oh my goodness, this program is amazing. And that's real, oh, that's like a real mouse too. <gasps> Oh, this is fantastic. Let me start. Oh, I just want to draw. This is so cool. Oh, look at... Wait a sec, what? Oh, I think there's a big gap here or something because the resolution's not right. I wonder if I can resize the page. Page size... There is not enough disk space to edit a picture that is that large. Ah, uh, okay. But there's so many... Look, 256 colours. So it's to do with the disk space. 
That's the problem. Oh, and look. Oh, there are so many colours down here. Oh, so that's 256 different colours I can use. That is really cool. But I think I'll move down to 16 colours so that there'll be enough resolution and stuff to do what I need to do. So we'll choose 800 by 600 in only 16 colours. Um, maybe something smaller. 480 by 640? Ah, fantastic. Now, this is working. Oh, but look. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's just 16 colours. So, when you're doing a lower resolution and less colours, there isn't that much to work with. I mean, a picture with just 16 colours just seems so strange today. We don't usually see that. Anyway, let's start drawing. I'll get black, this paintbrush, or a little section of an eye there, and a, whoa, a bigger section. Those, that's an awful eye. <laughs> and now a nose. Due to the resolution and the fact that I've got a Windows 7 machine emulating this, I guess it's not as accurate as if this was really on my computer. Because I mean, I'm moving the mouse not very much and it's still moving it heaps. Oh, this looks like an alien. I've got to be honest, this is actually a really good program. I think maybe we'll do like brown hair. Oops! Oh, I had a little gap. Did you see how it kind of just went on the screen? It didn't just go flick like we do in the normal paint programs of today. It was, it had to draw it on the screen. Because it was like DOS, it couldn't do everything as fast as our programs can today. Um, how do I undo? Nuts! Is there an undo like, undo, undo, where's the little, it's usually somewhere down here. Oh, there it is. Oh, fantastic. Now I'll fix that little gap. It's really hard because sometimes the mouse skips a few pixels and then it leaves a hole. So let's see if this worked. Fantastic. Now, green eyes. Actually, oh, he looks a bit like an alien. Red mouth. For a bit of fun, a pink nose. Now, what are some of these other things? I've got an arc here. Oh, look at that. You can make like a line like that. I see. And what about... This would just be straight lines. Okay. This looks like... Oh, a circle... Square, up, free form I see. Um, how do you end this thing? Ah, uh, there we go. It's really hard to click exactly to end that tool. Let's try out some spray. We'll spray on some freckles. Oops, a bit too much. There we go. This looks like a gradient, and this looks like solid colour. Let's try this out, the gradient here. Oh, look at that. The colours are changing. Wait a sec. If I spray... Why is it not working? Oh, gradient. Okay, let's change this around a bit. We'll move it. Change some colours. Build. Copy. G. Build. Why is this not working? Oh, that looks cool. Build that. Okay. Maybe this will... Oh, look at that ball. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, that's an awesome gradient. What about the fill tool? Wait a sec, let me try and fill his face up with this gradient. I'll try and draw like a little shirt here. Oh, that's funny. Okay, now let's try the fill tool on his face. And we'll change the colours around. Da, 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 da. Pull this all up. Oh, whoops, gradient, build. Okay, and that will be his face colour. Oh, that looks incredible. Whoa. But for some reason, the eyes aren't green anymore. Oh, whoa, look at this. Oh, you can do it from all sides. Oh, that's awesome. Let me just undo that, though. Okay, so we'll call this the creep. Ah, can I change the font? Oh, there we go. Bold. Oh, that's pretty cool. Choose, um, what should I choose? Olive. And I'll officially tag it at the bottom here. The creep. Save as the creep. Oh, it's not acceptable. <laughs> the creep is not an acceptable name. Sorry, I'll get rid of the space. Okay, now we're going to try and view an image file on DOS. Okay, I've taken a photo with my Surface Pro and reduced the colour quality so it'll be compatible with DOS. I've also gotten a program for DOS called PictView, which allows you to view picture files with DOS. The image is only 16 colours and in the BMP format. Okay, I've installed um, the PictView program. Now if we move over to the A drive by clicking Change Disk, and we enter A, 
there's a file, and as you can see when I move the mouse side to side it just scrolls across like that, because the file doesn't fit on the whole screen. I find it terrible that I've had to make the image 16 colours just so DOS can view it. There may be other types of files like 256 colours and stuff that DOS can view, but you must need a different file format or a PCX file or something like that for it to work, because the BMP, I've tried every other format and only 16 colour worked as a BMP file. So yes, with third party software I was able to view an image file on DOS, but when it comes to images, I don't think DOS can replace Windows 7. Okay, this next task might be a little difficult, but we'll try it out anyway. So play sound or music or some, some just some kind of like a tune or something that DOS can play so, somehow, I don't know. I might try a few MP3 files, WAV files and make them really compressed and really low and we'll tr see how it goes. Okay, DOS is officially driving me nuts. I am so... Three hours I've been trying to play an audio file. All these programs I'm getting just need to, oh my goodness, need to be compiled or something or something's wrong. There's errors. I'm just going to go insane. So I am just giving up and we're just going to try out QBasic. Because I know how we can make lots of sound with QBasic. Okay. I'm almost ready to end this video, but let's just continue. Okay. Before we open QBasic, I'm just going to show you, um, duh... I made a sound folder, CD sound. If you try to type something like DOS Wave, because these are some really... Look how compressed they are, like 64 kilobyte sound files and stuff. If you try and play it... Um, dot wave. It shows me a bunch of smiley faces and love hearts and... Ah, the opposite of what I'm feeling right now. But it played some sound. So does that mean I achieved the task? No, not at all. Instead we're going to go to QBasic, which is um, a programming language for DOS, which stands for Quick Basic, and I'm going to show you a very simple command. Sound, then you choose a frequency, so let's say a frequency of 400, and I want it to play for 10. I'm not sure what this is, I think 10 is about a second or something, so 20 would be like 2 seconds. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but the bigger this number, the longer it goes for. And that's just the frequency, so like ooh would be low and eh would be high. Then end, and I'll show you what this sounds like. So as soon as I press F5 on the keyboard, the program runs. And you can just hear boop, and then it stops. That was simply the 400 frequency sound at the length of 20. So now I'll show you some more advanced uses for the sound command. Okay, this time around you can see that I've done the same thing as before with the sound 800 and all of that. This time I've changed the frequency, so you've got an 800 and then for like 10 time units, 600 frequency for 5 time units, and then it just goes down all the way. So this time around it's actually going to play this tune that I've created. So here we go, you can now listen to my DOS music. I know it doesn't sound great, but that's just the um, what I could make without going crazy. You are killing DOS right now. Anyway, moving on, I've now got a for loop going on. So if I dim x as an integer, so x is a number, think of like algebra, I'm going to play the sound. So basically x is doing this. It's playing a sound for 0.2 time units. The sound starts off at 37 as a frequency, and the frequency will just go 38, 39, all the way up to 1000. So let's listen to that now. So that would make a sound like whoop. Okay, here we go. F5. Sounds pretty cool. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Why am I smiling now? I think I'm just going crazy with the rage that my body's like trying to make me smile. Okay, let's just move back to here before I do something strange. Okay, this time around we're gonna do a do loop and basically what it does is it goes on forever. It doesn't end. I've actually got to press end on the keyboard for it to actually end. So it'll do a sound a thousand times random. This makes it do a random frequency between, see how I've got 40, between 40 and 1040. Then once it's chosen a random frequency, it will play a sound for a random period between 0 and 5 time units. In other words, this is randomly generated DOS music. Let's check it out. Hear that? And that'll just keep on going on 
and on and on. Until, of course, the computer gets so old that it breaks. But there we go. What do you think? Actually, why is my chair turning? Ah! <laughs> my chair's possessed! Doss has possessed my chair! Okay, sorry, I'm going crazy. I'm not actually doing this! My chair is just spinning! I think I've got a possessed chair. I'm getting off my chair. Okay, I'm just going to stop this now before my chair gets any more possessed and before I go insane. Because this is already driving me. I'm already insane now. This is driving me more insane. Lastly, I want to show you something someone made with QBasic on YouTube. So um, they made the Portal 2 Once You Gone song or something like that. And here it is in DOS. So there we go, it's doing this song and it's doing text on the screen as well. So this is pretty cool. Okay, as for this task of play, sound and music with DOS, I'll give it a half, because I kind of did, but I didn't really get a real sound file, so I didn't fully achieve that, so I half achieved it. I'm so over this text-based interface, and I'm really in a gaming mood again, so we're gonna test out a game console emulator for DOS. And what console are we gonna try out? The Nintendo Entertainment System, originally released in 1983 in Japan. We will be using the Nesticle emulator for DOS, made in 1998. Now let's get Metro with Metroid. Okay, so I've got the emulator on the A drive, and it's called Nesticle, so we'll load it up. Unfortunately, I don't think there'll be any sound. Oh my goodness, look at these mouse. It's like a hand pointing... Oh, that's an awful mouse, because it's like... The oh, that's so clever, because it's in hand, but it's got no arm, which has been chopped off, so then blood's coming out. Very interesting. Okay, file, we'll load a ROM um, from the... Yeah, Metroid, that's it. Okay, this is Metroid. Sorry about there being no sound. Let's start. And I don't actually know how to play Metroid. Oh, no. And what do I do? Oh! Okay, so the... Ah! That's jump. Uh, Oh, and that shoot. Okay. This is working. Okay, and I've got to shoot this one. Ah! Gotcha. Okay, now where do I... Oh, this way. Okay. Ooh, what's that? Oh, no, don't come towards me. Ah! Do I get this? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I got something. I don't know what it was. Okay, let's just go this way now. Oh, ooh. Oh, you can roll into a ball. That's so cool. So this game was originally released in 1986. Okay, jump. Ah, no! Ah! Ah! <laughs> the bullets don't go f Oh, no. Okay. Up, up, up. The bullets, like, totally don't go far enough. Ah! No! Oh, I gotcha. Oh, what's that? Is that an energy thing? Oh, yay, it gave me some energy. Okay, so do I just... How do I get through? Go! Oh, there we go. Oh no, red ones now. <laughs> oh, nuts, nuts, nuts. What do you do? Ah! I'm dead. So that was Metroid. And yes, it actually worked on DOS, so that was pretty awesome. So we'll quit this now. We'll go back to our task list. Oh. I'm getting used to DOS, you know, I'm, be I'm able to move around and stuff. Well, now that I've got a mouse installed, it's a bit easier, but still, I'm not liking DOS whatsoever. But that task is now achieved. Now, after playing all these, like, games and graphics stuff, I really don't want to go back to text-based, so I'm going to do something that will solve all my text-based nightmares. Install a graphical interface for DOS. 
So here we go, I'm finally going to escape the horrible text-based command line DOS interface by installing a very popular user interface for DOS called GEM. GEM was a very popular DOS interface in the late 1980s, however users started switching to Microsoft Windows in the early 90s. Anyway, let's install GEM. Oh, it feels so good to finally be escaping from DOS and entering an actual graphical interface, but there's just one problem. This is going to be really hard to install. So let's try this out. I'll go to disk 1. Duh. Desktop. Okay, then gem setup.exe. Ah, oh, there's no mouse in this. This program installs gem 3 onto your computer. Do you want to install the first time? Yes, I want to install the first time. Select the graphics card. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. EGA, I think. Oh, but that's colour. Oh, this feels like pure luck now. It's like I have to choose an exact one, and if I don't pick the exact one, Gem just isn't going to install properly. And I don't know whether to take it safe or not. I think I'm going to take it safe and go for the monochrome display. Oh, I don't want to have to worry about this mouse thing again. Bus mouse, required file mouse.com. Okay, I've got that. Would I like to continue? Yes. Um, add a printer camera scanner. No, I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to add a printer, I don't want to remove a device from my setup. No, don't remove. Would you like to continue? Save and exit from gem setup. Insert the list labeled gem system master disk. Oh, nuts. Okay, I just entirely failed trying to install that, so I'm going to try again with an older version that didn't come on six disks. This is version 1.4 that just came on one disk, so let's try it out. Um, I think it's in system... CD system. Oh no. CD desktop. But those are DERS. I don't understand this. CD system MST. CD system dot MST. Ah, oh, there we go. Duh. And there's gem. Gem VDI not present in memory. Gem prep. .exe. Cannot open the file name. Gem prep one dot that. Okay, this is driving me nuts. So gem 1.4, we'll skip that, we'll go back down to gem 1.2. Now gem 1.2 was a retail version, it came in four floppy disks. I've actually named the floppy disks exactly as they're supposed to be named and done everything right this time and they're all on four separate floppy disks. Let's see if it works this time. Gem prep. Yes, it's actually working. Do you want to put the gem desktop on a hard disk? Yes. Is your hard disk drive C? Yes. Insert device driver disk one um okay well let me try oh my goodness it actually worked okay i just inserted the next disk pressed enter and it worked okay now i've got to do the graphics card okay so we're on to disk two so we're 25 percent of the way there now it comes up to choosing a display i think we'll go with monochrome pc display 640 by 350 no i want to do color display let's do five the resolution's a bit lower but i think this will be cool to see some color actually no seven because that gives us a high resolution and 16 colors so we'll try seven and we'll use the mouse.com so three what printer what if i was living back then and i didn't have any of those printers i just say one what printer port are you using oh no now it's getting confusing to say one other color okay this is the correct screen and printer yes okay now insert the next disc okay please work please work i just did that and it just said now to do disc one again i think so i'll try that insert your microsoft mouse I don't have a Microsoft mouse distribution disk. Oh no, just... Oh, this is the end of me. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to look online for a Microsoft mouse distribution disk. Yes, okay, okay. All I did was put mouse.com on a floppy disk, inserted the disk in, and it was like, yup. Now let's try this. Yes! In oh, the I'm getting so clear. Oh no. Insert a DOS disk containing format.com. I don't have format.com. I found the format.com file in the DOS folder. I've copied it over to a floppy disk now. Please work. Mode.com. Oh. Okay, I have now put every single .com file I could find in the DOS directory onto the floppy disk. Let's see what happens next. This concludes gem prep. Woo! I think I made it. If you wish to use the gem desktop, restart your system, type gem at the DOS prompt, and then press the enter key. I think I am done. So we'll try that. Control-Alt-Delete. Um, uh-oh, something's wrong with DOS.
Okay, thank goodness. The problem was the floppy with all those com files was still in there, and DOS was like, whoa, I can't boot from this. Anyway, here we go. Gem. Oh, I got it working. This is like completely Apple. I, I just feel, so this is 1985. Yeah, I'm feeling like this is Mac OS System 1 or something really old like that. Um, apparently Apple did sue them or something for the look and feel of their system, something like that. There's no floppy disk, hard disk, oh look at that, you can browse all your files like that, they're in folders, oh this looks amazing, and that's actually a .doc file, and if you double click this application can't find, okay so you can't actually open things with that, that's kind of annoying, what can you do? Oh it's got a calculator, oh, that's pretty cool, so if you wanted to calculate stuff, but it doesn't actually work, oh there we go, it's now working, 5 plus 5 equals 10. Fantastic, so the calculator does work, and look, there's an X button there. It's great, and clock, oh, and it's got a clock as well. This is fantastic. This actually makes DOS slightly bearable to use. So if I try to open Doom from here, what will happen? Open application, okay. Fantastic, Doom does work. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> You're trying to say you like DOS better than me, right? <laughs> And that's awesome, it takes you straight back to the desktop rather than back to DOS. So as soon as I quit Doom, I'm back in the desktop. This is so good. So you do need to install applications for Gem. It's almost like Gem is another operating system in a way, so it does need lots more applications and stuff like that. And what's this? Enter DOS commands. <gasps> oh no! It put me back in DOS! No, I don't want DOS, I want Gem. There we go, I'm back in Gem. Oh, it tried to take me back to DOS for a second. So there we go, we successfully installed a graphical interface for DOS. Before we finish the video though, let's do one more task. Install a gem application. Okay, here we go. The floppy disk is in. Gem. Okay, here we go. Let's open the floppy disk up. Oh, and there's all the files. It's great to just open it, see the files, and it stays there. Install.app. Gemrite will be installed to your hard disk, okay? Gemrite has been installed. Now that was easy. Let's see. I think there's some documents in here. Welcome to GenWrite. Please enter the following so GenWrite can be personalized for use. My name is Philip. Oh, I love this graphical interface and an actual real mouse too. Hard disk, yes. Floppy disks, one. Wow, look at this GenWrite. This is looking great. Oh, there's bold and italic stuff too and you can highlight. We'll write a new document saying that I have escaped from the DOS command line interface. Now font bold. Oh yes, bold does work. Oh, and you can move the mouse with the keyboard arrow keys. That's so strange. Since it says you can insert stuff, let's try and insert an image. Uh, okay, it looks like it has to be a certain type of image file. It doesn't actually just let you choose anything. That's a shame. So this GemWrite program was made in 1985. So it's even older than the Breeze program, yet it can do bold and stuff. Okay, I've finally escaped. Goodbye, DOS. I know that's not aligned right. Goodbye, DOS. And that concludes all the tasks. Now it's time for a little review of DOS. Overall, when it comes to navigation, DOS can certainly do the things Windows 7 can, but it can't efficiently replace Windows 7. Navigation and commands within the command line interface all had to be remembered and typed in very specifically. I never want to use the command line for managing my files ever again. As for gaming, there are literally thousands of games available for DOS. But at the same time, they aren't anywhere near as exciting as the games for Windows 7. I found myself only slightly entertained and not really willing to have another go of these games after recording the video, due to lack of good graphics, physics and well, everything about the games that was limited due to hardware and software limitations of the DOS era. As for word processing, DOS can definitely replace Windows 7, as long as you only intend to write simple TXT files. But modern word processors that can run on Windows 7, such as Microsoft Office 2010, hands down beat the two DOS word processors I tested. Ease of use and a variety of useful features describes Word 2010, but definitely not the Breeze word processor for DOS, which was nowhere near a Breeze to use. DPaint for DOS can definitely replace the default paint program in Windows 7, but unfortunately, not third-party programs for Windows 7, such as Photoshop, Fireworks, and GIMP. The viewing of image files was very difficult due to the fact that modern pictures won't work on DOS unless the amount of colours is greatly reduced. When it comes to playing sound files, DOS definitely 
can't replace Windows 7. It's hard enough to get a proper sound driver installed in DOS, and it's almost impossible to get a sound card today that's compatible with DOS. Even if you do, the music and sound quality will need to be lowered so DOS can handle it. Since viewing images and playing audio didn't work well, I didn't even attempt to play a video file with DOS. But when it came to emulating gaming consoles, DOS can replace Windows 7. As long as you only intend to emulate NES, Super NES, and other ancient gaming consoles you can think of. Hands down, the best thing about DOS was escaping from its terrible command line interface to a kind of nice, but extremely basic looking, gem interface. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Can, insert operating system here, replace Windows 7. See you next time.